Good morning. Our worship this morning begins our journey through 12 mystics, 12 groups of people that share with us what it's like to live with God at the center of your life. This week, our story, our journey into how we become more present to God in our ordinary, everyday lives begins with the life of St. Francis. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the highest. Praise God, sun and moon. Praise God, all you shining stars. Praise God, you highest heavens and you water above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for God commanded and they were created. Praise the Lord from the earth. You sea dragons and all creatures of the deep. Fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling God's command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds. Ruler of the earth and all peoples, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for God's name alone is exalted. God's glory is above earth and heaven. The Canticle of Creatures by St. Francis of Assisi. Most high, all-powerful, good Lord, yours are the praises, the glory, and the honor, and all the blessing. To you alone, most high, do they belong, and no human is worthy to mention your name. Praise be to you, my Lord, with all your creatures, especially Sir Brother Son, who is the day and through whom you give us light and he is beautiful and radiant with great splendor and bears a likeness of you, most high one. Praise be to you, my Lord, through sister moon and the stars in heaven. You form them clear and precious and beautiful. Praise be you, my Lord, through brother wind and through the air cloudy and serene and every kind of weather through whom you give sustenance to your creatures. Praise be you my Lord, through Sister Water, who is very useful and humble and precious and chaste. Praise be you, my Lord, through Brother Fire, through whom you light the night, and he is beautiful and playful and robust and strong. Praise be you, my Lord, through our sister Mother Earth, who sustains and governs us and who produces various fruit with colored flowers and herbs. Praise be to you, my Lord, through those who give pardon for your love and bear infirmity and tribulation. Blessed are those who endure in peace, for by you, most high, shall they be crowned. Praise be you, my Lord, through our sister bodily death, from whom no one living can escape. Woe to those who die in mortal sin. Blessed are those whom death will find in your most holy will. For the second death shall do them no harm. Praise and bless my Lord. Give him thanks and serve him with great humility.
grant you peace. God grant you peace. Those are the words that St. Francis taught his followers to say to everyone they encountered. Instead of hello, good morning, bonjour, he would say, God grant you peace. Words that I think are truly important this week. God grant you peace. Not peace as in to stifle protest. Not peace as in to stay. Would you all just go home so we can go back to normal? Not peace to stop us. But God grants you peace so that your soul, the inside of you, is healed and whole. God grants you peace so that what you're living with internally can be reflected externally. God grant you peace. I love the story of St. Francis. Partly because St. Francis is attributed with writing one of my favorite hymns, All Creatures of Our God and King. Because I've always been that person who loved the natural world, who loved to stand out amongst the flowers, to have animals around me, to see the glory of God's creation, to spend the day at the ocean listening to the waves roll in. And that hymn always spoke to me, spoke to my heart about who and what I wanted God to be, a God of all creation, a God present in all creation, a God who loved all creation. So why don't I tell you a little bit about St. Francis? Because I want St. Francis to start as our guide to help us learn things that will help us to become more connected to God, more in tune with creation, more alive to what it means to live with God in your heart and in your soul. So the story I want to start with is of St. Francis, and he was traveling around the countryside where he came to a church that was tumbled down and broken. And when he was in that church, he heard the voice say, Francis, repair my church which is falling down. And when he first heard those words, he thought that God was talking to him about this particular crumbling building. And so he said about rebuilding this church to God. But as, as he started to become closer and more connected to the movement of God within his life, he started to lead a reformed movement within the church because he realized that those words Francis, repair my church, which is falling down. They weren't about a particular building. They were about the structures and empire that had been created in this church. The church that began with humble, itinerant preacher from the Middle East. The church that began among the poor and the outcast and the lost, that church had become the church that built these glorious cathedrals of art. That church had become the church that collected wealth and power and hoarded it to itself. That church, that church he felt needed repair. That church needed to return to what God had been calling the church to be and to become. That church needed to turn around and turn back to the one that they were supposed to be following. And so Francis set out to repair the church. To repair the church. That's why one of the things that we can learn about St. Francis 
is that he took seriously this idea that we should live simply, that we should be in and with creation, not over creation, not possessing creation, not seeking power and possessions and financial security, but we should live simply, putting God ahead of everything. So I want to share with you a couple of stories about St. Francis and his connection to the natural world and his connection to God. So there's a legend that goes, one day as Francis and his companions were walking through the woods, Francis ran ahead and saw a flock of birds and begged them to listen to the word of God. And as the birds bowed their head in rapt attention, Francis preached. My brothers and sisters, birds, you should praise your creator very much and always love God. God gave you feathers to clothe you, wings so that you can fly, and whatever else was necessary for you. God made you noble among creatures, and God gave you a home in the purity of the air. Though you neither sow nor reap, God nevertheless protects and governs you without any solicitude on your part. Francis was stopped by the beauty and wonder of creation and wanted to share with creation the wonder and beauty of God. Those words he spoke remind us of the passage from Matthew's Gospel where Jesus tells his disciples, don't worry about what you will eat or what you will drink. Don't worry about the clothes that you will put on your back. For doesn't God clothe creation in all its wonder? Doesn't God give the birds everything they need to survive? Won't God give you the same? So don't worry. Francis reminds us that God is in every creature. We can see beauty in every face and honor life in all its forms. Another legend about St. Francis is about his encounter with a wolf. The town of Gubbio had been bothered by a wolf that they were scared of and frightened of. And when Francis was in that town and heard this story, he started to preach to them about God's love of creation and our duty because of God's love to love creation. And then he went out to meet the wolf. As he went and encountered the wolf, he made the sign of the cross, and the wolf stopped at this bold, audacious monk in his brown robe and white belt and his funky little haircut. And Francis said to the wolf, Brother wolf, in the name of Jesus, our brother, I have come to you. We need you in the city. These people have come with me to ask you, great ferocious one, to be the guardian and protector of Gubbio. In return, we offer you respect and shelter as long as you live. In pledge of this, I offer you my hand. And he stuck out his hand, and the wolf put his paw in his hand, and he and the wolf walked back to the village as brothers. St. Francis teaches us to encounter everyone, everyone, as if we will be unexpectedly encountering the face of the divine. For there's another story told of him about how he encountered a leper, and when he first saw that leper, all he could see was the scars and wounds. And yet he heard that nudge, that push from God, telling him to go, to go and be near that leper. And when he started to greet the leper and be with the leper and take care of the leper, he was able to see beyond his appearance to the priceless beauty of his inner life and soul. St. Francis encouraged us to find God in those unexpected places and in those unexpected people. 
and maybe in those people and creatures that we fear. Francis pushes us to look at the world and see the beauty within them, to experience the beauty within them, to acknowledge the beauty within them. That when we look with fear at the world, we miss out on the beauty that is possible for us to encounter. Francis invites us to go deeper, to go beyond appearances to the priceless beauty. When we think about the story and life of St. Francis, we are reminded to greet people with the peace of Christ. God grant you peace to welcome people and say to them, God grant you peace. Asking God to be with them so that their inner souls, their heart, their longings can be made to rest and be at peace. And then he taught us to be not so concerned with the outer covering, but the look at the beauty within. He taught us of the gift of being simple, of the gift of embracing a life of simplicity and poverty. He showed us that we could be different. And St. Francis composed this wonderful, magnificent poem a hymn about the Lord's creation. He said when he was composing the canticle creation, I wish to compose a new hymn about Lord, the Lord's creatures, of which we make daily use, without which we cannot live, and in without which the human race greatly offends the Creator. This poem, this canticle to creation that echoes the words of Psalm 148 speaks about praising God throughout the entire created order from the moon and the sun to the creatures and the flowers to forgiveness and peace and death. This canticle of creation is a poem that was written in the Italian dialect of Umbria. Not the high Latin, but the simple Latin, Italian. It gives it a personal flavor and sense. It shares with us this sense of being present in the entire created order, that God loves and lives with the whole creation and that we are invited to be part of that creation. And so when you lead your life this week, as you take moments to stop and be present with God, even if you don't say the words out loud, I invite you with every person you encounter to say, God grant you peace. I invite you to say that to every flower and tree and bird and creature that you encounter. God grant you peace. May God grant you peace. Amen. I invite you to 
join me in a moment of prayer. Close your eyes and breathe in deeply and release your breath. Breathe in again and release your breath, letting go of all the tension you feel in your shoulders and arms and legs. Breathe in deeply and breathe out. God grant you peace. God grant you peace. God grant you peace. God grant you peace for we, your people, need a sense of peace. There are so many living in a desperate pain. We are wondering if this feeling will never end as people walk out in the streets in all 50 states demonstrating against the death of black Americans. God grant your peace. We need to be made whole. We need healing for the sin of our racism. God grant you peace. We need healing for the people of this world who are still fighting the pandemic with illnesses and deaths still occurring daily. God grant your peace to grieving families. God grant your healing presence to those in need of help. God grant your peace. God grant your peace to the people of Mumbai as Cyclone Nisargra makes landfall with destructive winds and driving rain, threatening life and property. God grant your peace. God, we pray for those this week who've lost someone to death. Be with their grieving family. Bring your love. We pray for those on our hearts who are ill. For those who are anxious, depressed, and lonely. God, grant your peace. As we pray together the prayer that your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise God, sun and moon. Praise God, all you shining stars. Praise God, you highest heavens. May we show our praise for God by sharing of our gifts to support the ministry of this church. Amen.
Jesus shared meals in all kinds of homes, the home of Zacchaeus, a collaborator and a crook, the home of Simon, a Pharisee, where he defended the woman who caused a scene at the dinner party, the home of Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, his friends, a house where he could laugh and relax. We're used to sharing meals in grander buildings. Space is set apart and sacred, but it all began in an ordinary house, in an upstairs room, in a wayside inn, and around kitchen tables, in the spaces where people live, surrounded by the ordinary clutter of living. So we invite you. Come living Jesus, be our guest here in our homes. Come living Jesus, be our host here at your table. We remember. We remember the creator blessed all creatures and all human beings with plants on the ground and fruits on the trees. We remember Sarah's hospitality to angels, manna in the wilderness, oil that never gave out, Taste and see that God is good. We remember. We remember a 12-year-old at a Passover in Jerusalem, a meal cooked by Peter's mother-in-law, a small boy's lunch, Zacchaeus' feast, Martha's one-dish hospitality, a story about a fatted calf and dancing, another Jerusalem Passover, broken bed in Emmaus, and fish on a beach, we remember. We remember communal dining inspired by the Holy Spirit, Peter's unkosher dream that meant all God's children are accepted, Paul's communion on a sinking ship, and a vision of the fruit of the trees in the new Jerusalem, we remember. Our tables are as various as these, and they are as truly the meal of grace blessed by the Creator, Christ and indwelling spirit. So let us hear again the story of Jesus' supper with his disciples on the night before he died. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread and after blessing it, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is the body of this is the bread of heaven. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, drink from it, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant, which is poured out for as many for the forgiveness of sin. And so we pray. Come, Holy Spirit, pour out your blessing on our bread and wine and on us, your gathered people. We don't need an altar, a silver chalice, or starch table linen. It's your presence that makes these ordinary things holy. Amen. Here is the bread broken as the body of Christ was broken. Broken as the heart of God was broken. Broken as the seal on the tomb was broken. Broken to make us whole. The body of Christ broken for you. Here is the wine, a cup that brings us together even in our social distancing, a cup of forgiveness and blessing, the blood of Christ poured out for us. Please pray with me. Thanks, thank you for the grace that makes space for us at your table. Thank you for the familiar and beloved faces that we miss so very dearly. Thank you for the closeness we experience through technology and through sharing this meal together. May we continue our lives having been nourished and strengthened, filled with your uncontainable love that spills over to bless the world. Amen. God, grant you peace. 
And if nobody told you today that I love you, remember that God loves you and always will. Remember that Jesus loves you and always will. Remember that I love you.